Hi and welcome back. If you're new to the channel, my name is Vince. Thanks for stopping by. You're very welcome here indeed. So some time ago, I was watching a Rhonda Patrick podcast with Peter Atier, where she talked about athletic greens, also called AG1, and it not having any scientific evidence showing any tangible health benefits. But she did say that athletic greens were an excellent multivitamin. I did try to find that clip, but I couldn't. But then on her own podcast, she answered a question in the quick fire round about the same thing. So let's take a quick look at that clip now. All right. And so the last rapid fire question I know many of you are interested in was submitted by Teresa. Teresa says, hi, Rhonda. In the interview with Dr. Atia, he mentioned he takes Athletic Greens 1, also known as AG1, daily as part of his supplement regimen. Can you please comment on supplementing with high quality green powder like AG1? Thanks. Okay, so I do have some thoughts on this. I think that calling, for example, Athletic Greens 1 or AG1 a high quality greens powder is a little misleading. I think it's more of a multivitamin. In fact, I'm not impressed with AG1 being anything more than a multivitamin. If that is how you prefer to take your multivitamin, I think go for it. It does look like it is a pretty good quality multivitamin. But if you think you're getting additional benefits, like like you're getting greens from it, that is not likely the case at all. Um, there's very minuscule amounts of the quote unquote superfood complex and the quote unquote nutrient extract and the probiotics that are in in that blend. So I mean, the the amounts are so minuscule that there's there's absolutely no way that you should be considering this a greens supplement. It should be a multivitamin, and that is the way to think about it. It is a multivitamin. It is not a superfoods type of supplement. Um, it's not. I don't think it should be replaced for greens or fruits or any other superfood superfoods at all. So uh, again, if you are looking for a multivitamin and you like to take it in that sort of drink form then it looks like it's a pretty it's it's got some pretty decent um, micronutrients in there and I do like um, you know the, the the list of micronutrients in there as a multivitamin but beyond that is not going to serve a purpose of being a greens kind of replacement and even the levels of things like probiotics in there are it's like a drop in the swimming pool. It's it's so it's so small. It's more like a placebo. I mean, it's just it's very very minuscule amount of of probiotics and also the other uh, complex things in there as well. So um, that that's my thoughts on it. Um, it's it seems like it's a a, a high quality uh, multivitamin if that's the way you like to take your multivitamin. So out of curiosity, I did look at the Athletic Greens compound list, and it is indeed very comprehensive. I then remembered that Brad Stanfield also sells his own multivitamin. So I looked at that as well, and they were very close. And then a week or so later, I was having a conversation with an American friend of mine who lives in Germany and told me about a multivitamin that he takes that he gets from Doctors Best. As we were chatting online, I called it up as we were talking, and it also has a very comprehensive list of compounds. So I thought it would be interesting to do a head to head of all three to see which one comes out on top with regard to compounds and the quantity of those compounds. And also more importantly to the vast majority of us, which one of them would be the most cost effective. Now there are numerous ways that I could analyze these three products to find out which one is the best. And that's obviously in my humble opinion. But the standard that I've decided to use is the recommended daily or dietary allowance, RDA, or the recommended daily dietary intake, and that's known as RDI. Now, the RDA and the RDI, when it's on food product supplement facts labels, are more often than not recorded as daily value, and that's then abbreviated to DV. I did this because most people, including me, will understand the percentages more easily than trying to work out what the body requires in regard to milligrams, micrograms, or scoops. Now, although I'm using the RDA or the RDI as a standard, there are some things that we need to know because using this as a standard does come with some inherent issues. Now, the RDA or RDI allowance or intake refers to the average amount of a given nutrient that will sufficiently meet the nutrition requirements of 97 to 98% of the population. Also know that the RDA RDI does not define the levels of nutrients required for optimal health, but only for sufficient health. So that's the first question you need to ask yourself. Do you want to be sufficient or do you want to be optimal? Also, RDAs estimate nutrient levels based on healthy individuals. 
In many cases, the RDI is not sufficient for people dealing with chronic illnesses and nutrient deficiencies. That's enough waffling off me. Let's jump in and let's just take a look at the multivitamins. So this is the breakdown of the three products. You've got Brad Stansfield's on the left, Athletic Greens is in the centre, and Doctor's Best you can see on the right. I've also listed what each of those products contains with regard to compounds, and there are 25 compounds in total. And these 25 have measurable recommended daily dietary intakes. And there are eight compounds you can see in the table below that shaded slightly in grey. These compounds do not have an established recommended daily allowance, dietary allowance, daily intake or daily value. Now, that's just a mass of numbers. So for ease of comparison, I have sectioned them. Products that do not contain any of the 25 elements are left in white. As a standard, arbitrary as it is, I would want more than 50% of my nutrients to come from food. So any compound that has 50% or less of the recommended daily allowance is colored in yellow. And anything in red exceeds the recommended RDA or RDI. So the second question or decision now that you have to make is, are you comfortable with compounds exceeding the recommended daily intake? Or indeed, are you happy that the compound supplies less than 50% of the RDA. For example, sodium, Brad gives only 1%, Athletic Greens gives 2%, and Doctors Best gives zero. So is 1% or 2% really necessary or is it indeed beneficial? And we spoke earlier about RDA being sufficient and not optimal. Is 1% actually suboptimal? Let me know what you think in the comments below. So of the 25 compounds, Brad's multivitamin has five that are absent. Athletic Greens has four out of the 25 that are not present, and Doctor's Best has two that are not present. So Doctor's Best seems to come out on top here when it comes to the amount of compounds in their multivitamin. So moving on to the multivitamin, having more than 50% of the recommended daily intake, so 51% or above, Brad's multivitamin has 18 that don't offer more than 51%. Athletic Greens has 11 that don't offer more than 51%. And Doctor's Best has five that don't offer more than 51%. So I think, again, Doctor's Best comes out slightly on top. Now, you do have some control over these compounds in that to get these amounts, Brad's multivitamin requires you to take five capsules per day. Athletic Greens requires you to take one scoop of their product. And Doctor's Best requires you to take just the three capsules. So you could look at reducing those quantities to be more aligned with your nutrient intake from your diet. Let's now look at what Athletic Greens offers over and above the other two. Now, although Rhonda Patrick says that Athletic Greens does not give you the same benefits as eating greens, there are a number of green related compounds in Athletic Greens. Let's quickly remind ourselves what she said specifically about the greens and not about the multivitamin content. But if you think you're getting additional benefits, like like you're getting greens from it, that is not likely the case at all. Um, there's very minuscule amounts of the quote unquote superfood complex and the quote unquote nutrient extract and the probiotics that are in in that blend. So I mean, the the amounts are so minuscule that there's there's absolutely no way that you should be considering this a greens supplement. It should be a multivitamin, and that is the way to think about it. It is a multivitamin. It is not a superfoods type of supplement. Now, there are far too many of these compounds for me to list, so I'm just going to throw up a picture so you can pause the video if you like, and then you can zoom in, or you can go to the internet and you can look up these compounds, and then you can decide whether or not, especially when we come to the cost, if taking AG1, that's Athletic Greens, is something that you think you'd like to consider. Let's now move on to the cost of these multivitamins. I'm going to leave up the table with a color code. I think it's a lot easier to look at the colors and then decide whether or not the multivitamin that you're currently taking or you're thinking of taking is indeed cost effective. Now, although you need to take three capsules a day for Doctor's Best and you need to take five capsules for Brand's multivitamin and one scoop for Athletic Greens, the good thing with regard to comparing these products is that they all sell them in a one month package. So I'm now going to cover what it would cost you per month 
to take that particular multivitamin. So for Brad, it's going to cost you 49 US dollars a month. Athletic Greens is going to cost you a whopping 79 US dollars a month. And it appears you can't make a one off purchase. You have to subscribe to get this price. And Doctors Best will cost you $30.99. So let's just call that 31 bucks. So Doctors Best is $18 cheaper than Brad's multivitamin and a massive $48 cheaper than Athletic Greens or AG1. Well, I hope you found that interesting or informative, hopefully both. Let me know what you think of my multivitamin head-to-head -head analysis. I'd also be interested to see if anyone does take either Brad's multivitamin, Athletic Greens, or indeed Doctors Best. And now having seen the comparison of the contents and the quantities related to the recommended daily allowance or daily intake, and then comparing that to the cost of the products, do you think you may be purchasing a different product in the near future if you do indeed take one of these three at the moment? At present, I don't take a multivitamin, although there seems to be a growing body of evidence now that multivitamins may be beneficial if perhaps you're feeling under the weather or indeed you're dieting or fasting and may not be getting all the nutrients that you do require. So if I were at that stage now, looking at this analysis, and remember there's more than one way to skin a cat, meaning there are other standards you could use to decide which one comes first, second or third, not just RDA, RDI and DV. But as I say, going by this analysis, I'd probably stump for doctor's best. Let me know if you're not taking a multivitamin at the moment, which one of these three would you buy? 